tonight parliamentary pandemonium parliament heats up after speaker announces ranjan ramanayaka decision ranjan leo silvester ramanayaka ceased to be a member of parliament in terms of article 66d of the constitution no tolerance for extremism once accused of easter attack links acmc mp says sri lankan muslims are themselves victims of extremism we are living in an era of unspeakable horrors an era where extremism has rendered us all hostage also victims of a global conspiracy zero tolerance the attorney general slaps a ban on 11 tauhid organizations operating in sri lanka smart sri lanka president gotabaya pledges creating a smart nation composed of a technology dependent society All this and much more coming up on this Wednesday, the 7th of April 2021. Alcohol adangu hand sanitizer baavita karanne. Lady roga athi karanu visha bija valeta erahi vasa tan karanne. Handun vadi me milan rupiah tun se panhai. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana first at nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at 9. I'm Shanella Fernando in your top stories for tonight. Pandemonium reigned in Parliament after the Speaker announced that MP Ranjan Ramanayake has ceased to be a member of Parliament under Article 66D of the Constitution. The Secretary General of Parliament had informed the Chairman of the Elections Commission that Ramanayake, who is currently serving a prison sentence, was disqualified from holding the post of a parliamentarian and therefore is deemed to have vacated his seat. Accordingly, former Member of Parliament Ajit Manna Peruma is expected to fill Ramanayake his position which was rendered vacant Former Samagi Janabalavegya parliamentarian Ranjan Ramanayake was sentenced to 4 years rigorous imprisonment after being convicted for contempt of court Following the verdict Ramanayake submitted a motion to the Supreme Court requesting permission to file a petition seeking reconsideration of the sentence which was later rejected by the Supreme Court Consequent to the sentencing of the former MP the Secretary General of Parliament took steps to inform the Elections Commission that Ramanayake should be replaced by another person of the same party who contested the parliamentary poll in August last year Ramanayake subsequently filed a writ application in the Court of Appeal seeking a mandatory order preventing the Secretary General of Parliament from taking steps to vacate his seat The writ application however was rejected by the Court of Appeal without a hearing. Accordingly Speaker Mahinda Yapa Bewardena told Parliament today that the Secretary General of Parliament had informed the Elections Commission Chief that Ramanayake has ceased to be a member of Parliament. After consideration of the legal opinion and the provisions of the constitution the Secretary General of Parliament in terms of section 641 of Parliament Election Act number 1 of 1981 has informed the chairman of the election commission of a vacancy which occurred in the membership of ninth parliament due to the fact that honorable a a ranjan leo silvester ramanayake member of parliament for the electoral district of gampaha ceased to be a member of parliament in terms of article 66d of the constitution obutuma me thindu aragena tibenne ranjan ramanayake matituma me parliamentuwata maasa thunuka kaalayak nupeminiyai kiyana කාරණාව මත තමයි ඒ තීන්දුව දීලා තියෙන්නේ මිනිස්සත්වේ නාමින් එතුමාගේ අභියාචනාව එහෙමත් නැත්නම් ඒ ශ්‍රේෂ්ඨාධිකරණය ඉදිරිපත් කරන ඒ අභියෝගය සම්පූර්ණ වෙනකන් ඔබතුමා ඒ අවස්ථාව ලබා දෙන්නේ මොකද ඔබතුමා නිවාඩු ඉල්ලීමේ එහෙමත් නැත්නම් පාර්ලිමේන්තුව නොපැමිණීමේ යෝජනාව මීට මාසකට පෙර ප්‍රතික්ෂේප කරා හරි සම්බන්ධයෙන් නඩු තීන්දුවක් දීලා තියෙනවා නඩු තීන්දුවේ පිටපත මට ලැබිලා තියෙනවා ඒ නඩු තීන්දුවේ පිටපතේ ගත්තු තීන්දුව තමයි මේ දන්වල තියෙන්නේ නොපැමිණීම මත නෙමෙයි නඩු තීන්දුවේම තියෙනවා ඒක මිනිස්ට්‍රීලියල් ඩියුටි එකක් නඩු තීන්දුව ලැබුණේ කොහෙන්ද අභියාචනාධිකරණය ඉතින් අභියාචනාධිකරණයේ දුන්නු නඩු තීන්දුවක් අභියෝගයකට ලක් කරන්නට ශ්‍රේෂ්ඨාධිකරණයේ පුළුවන්ද බැරිද පුළුවන් ඔබතුමාට සති 3/4කට පෙර නිවාඩු යෝජනාවක් එහෙමත් නැත්නම් නොපැමිණීමේ යෝජනාවක් දැම්මද දැම්ම ඒක ඔබතුමා ප්‍රතික්ෂේප කරලා විපක්ෂ නායකතුමා දැන් ඒකම පාවිච්චි කරලා ඔබතුමා මෙතුමාගේ මන්ත්‍රී ඒ ඔබතුමා වැරදි 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 විග්‍රහයක් ඇත කරනවා ප්‍රහදිලිව විවස්ථානුකූලව රංජනාමනායක මන්ත්‍රීතුමාගේ මන්ත්‍රී ධුරය අහෝසි වෙලා තියෙනවා නඩු තී 
Members of the opposition then protested the decision which led to a tense situation in the house. मैं रांझन मंत्र तुम्हारे मंत्री दूर है आधा हाउस ही वाला ही जला आप इधर पाली में इन तोड़ दाना ना खाली महाले काम वाले आई तामत में पक्षा ग्राही ले सलियों मार लिया लती है ना केर दामा यार आंची तुम्हारा दाले भी युतु नहीं तुम्हारा कल्पना कराने ने मंत्री वरुण के प्रजातंत्र वादी � Meanwhile, former State Minister Ajit Manna Piruma, who contested the last general election from Samagijana Balavegia, is expected to fill the parliamentary seat of Ranjan Ramanayaka. Manna Piruma came in fifth among the SJB contestants from the district of Gampaha, securing a total of 47,212 preferential votes. <laughs> President Gotabe Rajapaksa says that utilizing the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, biotechnology, robotics, cloud computing, nanotechnology and 3D printing, Sri Lanka is beginning to create the infrastructure to make the country a global innovation hub. The President announced this during his address to the inaugural Sri Lanka Internet Day 2021, organized by the Digital Chapter of the Federation of Information Technology Industry in Sri Lanka. On a 10-point policy framework, I presented the sixth pillar, a technology-based society, assumes great importance because it is an enabler for the overall development of Sri Lanka and strengthens the implementation of people-centric economic proposals. In order to give effect to this initiative, a technology-based society in the latter half of last year, a new ministry of technology was established under my charge. This new ministry envisages revoking strategies that will help build a technology-based society. The goal and the collective mission of this ministry is to build a culture of technology and innovation that will enhance the internet economy and living standards of our people and add value to their life. We have pledged and are working diligently towards creating a smart nation composed of a society dependent on technology. A culture of technological innovation is what we are aiming to establish. The policy enunciated also outlines the creation of a global innovation hub. Through the introduction and later ensuring wide availability of Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, biotechnology, robotics, cloud computing, nanotechnology and 3D printing, Sri Lanka is beginning to create the infrastructure to make the country a global innovation hub. A few key programs in this component are establishing a countrywide high-speed optical data transmission system and a high-speed 5G mobile broadband system to facilitate data transmission, establishing digital cities with digital administration and monitoring, introducing mobile and digital payment systems, and introducing new legislation to ensure data protection, cyber security and intellectual property rights. We also envisage through our policy basket to promote IT entrepreneurship. We are therefore very desirous 
of supporting the local entrepreneurs to develop software for the international market and boost our IT exports to US dollars 5 billion annually. Meanwhile, also in Parliament, leader of all Ceylon Makkal Congress, MP Rishad Badiuddin, asserted that the Muslim community will stand with the country against any and all forms of terrorism and extremism. The MP added that the desire of Sri Lanka's Muslims is to always be recognized as fellow citizens rather than a separate community. We are living in today's world in an era of dilemma, an era of unspeakable horrors, an era where extremism has rendered us all hostage. We have looked to our allies in peace and some amongst them have looked to hold us. As villains, instead of as also victims of a global conspiracy, our allies in peace have forgotten that we stood with them even in the face of adversity. This is our motherland. Our assets and finances remain in Sri Lanka. We did not plunder this country like the Dutch, Portuguese and British. The Sinhalese, Tamils and Christians are our brothers in our quest to serve our Mother Lanka and nobody can or should take that right from us. When the Muslims were demanded to support the LTTE or be evicted from the north, we the Muslims of Sri Lanka chose to lose our homes and our belongings to be loyal to our motherland. We gave up our assets and our livelihood to live as refugees. I was also one of those evicted by the LTTE. We Muslims never asked to be regarded separately. We only asked to be given the right to live as Sri Lankans as Muslims. I must admit there were extremist elements who exploited the name of Islam and caused turmoil. The terrorists behind the East attacks are not Muslims. They are terrorists that hijacked the name of Islam for their own sinister agendas. I am not here to defend them. I cannot and will not defend or support any terrorist even if my life was on the line. The Muslim community will stand with you today and forever against any and all forms of terrorism and violent extremism. The Parliamentary Select Committee appointed by the then Speaker and the Commission of Inquiry appointed by then President have both exonerated me from all of crass allegations falsely linking me with those terrorists. The Attorney General has slapped a ban on 11 Islamic Tawheed organizations as per the recommendation of the report in the report rather of the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the Easter Sunday attacks. Among the organizations are the Ceylon Tawheed Jamaat and the Save the Pearl organization operated by detained attorney Hijaz Hezbollah. In its final report, the Presidential Commission probing the Easter attacks recommended that the Jamaat Islami and Sri Lanka Jamaat Islami student movement be banned as some Easter attackers were counted as members. Further, it also recommended that all Tawheed Jamaat organizations be banned as well. Against this backdrop, Attorney General Dapula de Oliveira has instructed the IGP to ban 11 Islamic extremist organizations operating in the country. Based on investigations conducted by the Terrorism Investigation Division, the AG's Coordinating Officer State Council Nishara Jayaratna announced today. The list of banned organizations are United Tawhid Jamat, Ceylon Tawhid Jamat, Sri Lanka Tawhid Jamat, All Ceylon Tawhid Jamat, Jamiatul Ansari Sunnatul Muhammadiyah, Darul Adar and Jamiul Adar, Sri Lanka Islamic Student Movement, Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, Al Qaeda, Save the Pearl, and Super Muslim. Among the banned organizations are the Ceylon Tawhid Jamaat, led by Abdul Razik, and Save the Pearl, chaired by attorney at law Hijal Hezbollah, who is currently detained for spreading extremist ideologies and for having close ties to the terrorists. Meanwhile, the Sri Lanka Jamaati Islami organization said in a statement today that it was concerned by the Easter Commission's recommendations to ban it, a leading Muslim organization in the country. Minister of Trade Dr. Bandula Gunavardhana says that a license will be issued to biscuit manufacturers and bakery operators to import palm oil stocks required by them for their production without any shortages. Speaking at the parliament today, the minister added that any entity in the sector can appeal to the secretary of the Ministry of Finance in order to import the oil stocks required. 
అతిగరు జనాధిపతుమా విసింగ్ కటుపోల్ వగావహ ఫామ్ ఓయిల్ ఆనాయనే తానం కళ ఏ తానాయన కళామ దం వినమ మతవాదియా గినియనో బేకరీ కర్మాన్ తీవరై బిస్కట్ కర్మాన్ తీవరై అనాది వసింగ్ ఏ సాధారణ నే మొగద హేతు అపి బిస్కట్ కర్మాన్ తేటత్ బేకరీ కర్మాన్ తేటత్ బలపత్రే క్లబాదినో ఊంగి అవశ్య ఎదుం ఓల్ట అవశ్య ఫామ్ ఓయిల్ హింగేకిన్ తరో గిన్న గన్ ఓనమ కెనికుట ముదల్ల మాత్యాంసే లేకం వరయ వెత అభియాచనయ కరంట పులువన్ తమంగి కర్మాన్ తేట అవశ్య ఫామ్ ఓయిల్ గినా గనిమ సదా దనటత్ ఫామ్ ఓయిల్ ఫ్యాక్టరీ తీన ఆనాయనేకరణాల ఏవా దేశీయ వెలంద పోల్ట్ ఇతరాన్ని మే జాత్యంతర వెలంద పోల్ట బిస్కట్ సపేన పర్మాంత సాల ఏ ఆయట క్రూడ్ ఓయిల్ నిమి పిరిసిదు కర సమ్మత ప్రమితీంట అను ఏ ఆయకి నిష్పాదనే సందా అముద్ర ఊయక్లేస ఎదువు మక్లేస ఆవశ్యకన్నది ఆనాయనే కిరీమట పమన బలపత్రయక్ లభాగన్న పులువా అనుదేమవని దెన్నే During the meeting of Sri Lanka cricket with the Committee of Public Enterprises yesterday, it was revealed that the institution has spent additional amounts of, as legal charges for the closure of the agreement of its former head coach Chandika Hathuru Singh. Further, it was also revealed that 16 million rupees has been waived off from 2010 to 2020 in order to construct and further develop local and international stadiums. Sri Lanka cricket tie than a Padana Purunkaru, Chandika Hatrusing, Gay Kontaratua, Nimakirim, Miriana Tihakatas and Mudalak, Medakwa, a Niti Katu to Sandha Gilatino, Chandika Hatrusing, a Gay Kontaratu, Niamakar and Nimakar Laganum, Givan and Kiakano, Miriana Siakano, Enisatamai, then Maven got a million Tiha, Laksa Tunsi Yakitra, Nadugas to Niti Nagasu Sandha Givelatini, Eokomakar and Nadu Paraduno, our Kontaratu Gas to Givel and Adugas to Givanduino, then Apita Aranjatino, Demo may settle. ंग श्रीलंका <laughs> हतर दिन मेन मे हतर दिन आगे तन अमा The chief epidemiologist Dr. Sudat Samaravira says that there is still a possibility of COVID-19 clusters cropping up in the country during the New Year season as Sri Lanka's daily case load still remains above 100. He added that locations where people fail to maintain social distancing and places where people gather in mass numbers remain the highest risk at the moment. The daily COVID-19 caseload in the island yesterday comprised of 158 district-based infections and 19 foreign arrivals. The highest infections this time around came from the Gampa district with 31, while the Kalamu district recorded 29. 
In addition, 28 infections were reported from Ratnapura, 22 from Jaffna, 12 from Kurunagala, 8 from Kandy, 5 infections each from Kalutra and Nuarelia, 4 from Munragala, and 2 from Goa. The 12 remaining infections were identified from 10 other districts. Meanwhile, at a media briefing this morning, Chief Epidemiologist Dr. Sudat Samaravira had this to say on the ongoing vaccination process in the country. Up to now, in Sri Lanka, we have immunized 924,687 people with Covishield vaccine, the first dose given to these people. And yesterday and the day before yesterday, we have given 2,469 doses of Sinopharm vaccines to Chinese nationals. And the balance of the Sinopharm vaccine that we received as a donation in total 600,000 doses will be rolled out in our country but only after it is been approved by the expert committee of the National Medicine Regulatory Authority and also with the approval of the National Advisory Committee on Communicable Diseases. Further, Dr. Samarveda also warned that there is a possibility of fresh COVID-19 clusters during the New Year season as the country still reports infections about 100 each day. We have a lot of COVID-19 infections in the country. We have a lot of COVID-19 infections in the country. We have a lot of COVID-19 infections Meanwhile, the country's COVID-19 recovery study rose to 90,917 after 209 more patients recovered and were discharged during the day. Former President Maitripala Sirisena and other representatives of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party called on the chief prelate of the Ramanya sect, Most Venerable Makulavi Vimalathera, today. The party representatives presented the Thera with a set of proposals drafted by the party for inclusion into the new constitution, including the introduction of district-based councils instead of provincial councils. Ex-chairman of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, former President Maitripala Sirisena and a group of ministers and parliamentarians visited the chief prelate of the Ramanya sect, Most Venerable Makulayave Vimalathera. Senior Vice President of the SLFP, Minister Nimal Siripala de Silva, presented the chief prelate with the party's proposals for a new constitution. <laughs> Chief Epidemiologist Dr. Sudat Samaravira says that there is still a possibility of COVID-19 clusters cropping up in the country during the New Year season as Sri Lanka's daily caseload still remains above 100. He added that locations where people fail to maintain social distancing and places where people gather in mass numbers remain the highest risk at the moment. The daily COVID-19 caseload in the island yesterday comprised of 158 district-based infections and 19 foreign arrivals. The highest infections this time around came from the Gampa district with 31, while the Kalamu district recorded 29. In addition, 28 infections were reported from Ratnapura, 22 from Jaffna, 12 from Kurunagala, 8 from Kandy, 5 infections each from Kalutra and Nuarelia, 4 from Munragala, and 2 from Goal. The 12 remaining infections were identified from 10 other districts. Meanwhile, at a media briefing this morning, Chief Epidemiologist Dr. Sudat Samaravira had this to say on the ongoing vaccination process in the country. Up to now, in Sri Lanka, we have immunized 924,687 people with Covishield vaccine, the first dose given to these people. And yesterday and the day before yesterday, we have given 2,469 doses of Sinopharm vaccines to Chinese nationals. And the balance of the Sinopharm vaccine that we received as a donation in total 600,000 doses will be rolled out in our country but only after it has been approved by the expert committee of the National Medicine Regulatory Authority and also with the approval of the National Advisory Committee on Communicable Diseases. 
Further, Dr. Samarveda also warned that there is a possibility of fresh COVID-19 clusters during the New Year season as the country still reports infections about 100 each day. We have to look at the COVID-19 in the past, and we have to look at 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 the past. Meanwhile, the country's COVID-19 recovery study rose to 90,917 after 209 more patients recovered and were discharged during the day. Former President Maitripala Sirisena and other representatives of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party called on the chief prelate of the Ramanya sect, Most Venerable Makulevi Vimalathera, today. The party representatives presented the Thera with a set of proposals drafted by the party for inclusion into the new constitution, including the introduction of district-based councils instead of provincial councils. Ex-chairman of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, former President Maitripala Sirisena and a group of ministers and parliamentarians visited the chief prelate of the Ramanya sect, Most Venerable Makulayave Vimalathera. Senior Vice President of the SLFP, Minister Nimal Siripala de Silva, presented the chief prelate with the party's proposals for a new constitution. Balasabha metivat ne kadi, abhut mana pohut ko atik metivat ne kadi ano de. Dena ta apni sandha ne kato apni inni isamandu anagati thi inni karan noone komuda pichre dhan nikhe. Sri Lanka ni dance pakshe rasa dar ne novena veda pille karta mai apni hamite ma karpana karan. In business news, speaking at a meeting between Sri Lankan and Pakistani construction industry representatives, State Minister of Money, Capital Markets and State Enterprise Reform, Ajit Nivad Kabral says that development levels up to 2030 will be at levels never before witnessed in the country and will exceed levels seen during the 2006 to 2014 period. Also speaking at the event, Pakistan's High Commissioner, Major General Mohammad Saad Khatak commended Sri Lanka's stable security situation and called for more Pakistani investment in the country. A meeting between representatives of the construction industry in Sri Lanka and Pakistan was held in Colombo yesterday. Speaking at the event, State Minister of Money, Capital Markets and State Enterprise Reform, Ajit Nivad Kabral said that Sri Lanka's transformation from 2020 to 2030 will move at a more rapid pace than witnessed during the 2006 to 2014 period. In the time of President Mahindra Rajapaksa, we wanted to ensure that 100% of the people had electricity and at that time we had only 70% of the people with electricity and everybody thought that's not going to happen. We had only 400,000 tourists coming but President Rajapaksa said, I want two and a half million tourists. Everybody started laughing. We were having 3% or 4% growth. He said we are going to have 8% growth. People thought that's a daydream. He said we are going to finish the war. People thought that's not going to happen. It happened. People were skeptical when we said we are going to change the landscape. We are going to have high rises. We are going to change the way Sri Lanka looks. The roads will be different. People thought that that's not going to happen. It happened. That was the transformation during the period 2006 to 2014. I can tell you that the transformation from 2020 to 2030 will be no different. In fact, it will be a lot more exciting. It's going to change the way Sri Lanka does business. It's going to change the way Sri Lanka is perceived. It's going to change the way Sri Lanka would treat investors and it will change in a manner that people wouldn't have thought possible. To do that, all you gentlemen and ladies are going to make Sri Lanka work. There are two, three things that are very important for uh, any business to flourish in any country. One is the uh, political support the second is the conducive secure environment in which the business community or the investors comes in and play. Sri Lanka is a country that has got the most supportive, the most 
pro-Pakistan political leadership. The security environment could not be better than what it is now. Sri Lankan shares ended higher today, helped by gains in the financial and consumer staple sectors. The CSC All Share Price Index notched its fourth straight session of gains, closing 0.41% higher at 7,310.26, while the SNPSL 20 index of more liquid stocks gained 0.69% to close at 2,954.81. Meanwhile, the rupee closed weaker once again at 201 to 202 rupees and 50 cents to the US dollar today after closing at 201 to 202 rupees yesterday. Let's now take a look at how the rupee fared against other major currencies during the day. With that, we wrap up tonight's edition of First at Nine. Thank you for joining. Have a good night.